Roberts in studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here. And the social assassin, New York <laughs> Times bestselling author, John Gilstrap. Good morning. Also known as the star of this show. There you go. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not. The no, only no, one, no, no. He said it. He said it. One, done. one person in weakness made that statement. Let's <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> memorialize that statement. <laughs> Oh, Bill, your camera's facing Amy, which is uh, probably a good thing. To see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Amy, yeah. got the camera. No, that's back. actually, that's, why don't we keep it there? That, that's all good. We'll have a stereo version of Amy with see, two even the videos. camera is on my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going toward Amy, not you. It, it, that's my point. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't make any inappropriate gestures yeah. or, you know. Camera, resume shot of Amy <laughs> at the expense of Bill. Amy Orndoff, our guest here, Executive Director of Berkeley Senior Services. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Great to have you with us. What's for lunch Thank today? You. I knew you were going to ask that, I, well, so I came prepared. Yeah, I knew you would. We are having um, burgers on uh, whole wheat buns. I do know that. Um, potato wedges, baked beans, and mixed fruit. And you can get that uh, wonderful food for the price of? Um, they, it did increase a little, um, so it's now seven twenty-five versus the five twenty-five. If you are under sixty, anyone over sixty, come enjoy a meal. That's everyone in this room, um, <laughs> except me, me included. <laughs> you lapped that number. We would have a VIP table just for you. Oh, you're so kind. Does the price go down for every decade that you hit, Amy? By the way, <laughs> they'd be paying me money. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, no, but if you are over sixty, it's on a suggested donation. So whatever is within your price range. Bill? Including stars like John Gill? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We would roll out the red carpet for you guys. Stars like who? So anybody, <laughs> anybody can go to Berkeley Senior Services and have lunch. We welcome anyone. Are you truly welcomed in or do the seniors eyeball you like you're eating my food? What's going on? Depending on the day, um, you, you might be sized up by some you of the seniors so? at the, the first table. That first table just always yeah. seems to be the popular table. But now, um, everyone is always so welcoming. And anytime we have a new face, you know, of course, our seniors are checking them out and yeah. wanting to learn more about them. And that's how friendships develop. That's how the socialization happens. On an average day, how many seniors do you have at the center? That can really vary. It's very, very fluid. Um, it could be something as small as maybe 20 to 30. Um, lately, we've been having more like 70 to 90 on a given day. 70 to 90 is 70 to 90. That's a great number. Yeah, it's a great facility. Have, if you haven't been to Berkeley Senior Services, it's a, a marvelous facility there on High Street, and I recommend everybody check it out, whether you're a senior now or a senior to be. And and even if you're not a senior or even if you are a senior, we always need volunteers. So come check us out. See what we do. Um, we always need people to lead classes, to, to welcome and to greet. We have a respite area um, where we're providing care for those with Alzheimer's or dementia, so their mm-hmm. caregiver can get a break. So we utilize volunteers in that department. Our kitchen can always use depart, uh, volunteers. They so can help chef. Come check us out. They can help Shanice. 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 Yeah. Shanice. Yes. Chef Shanice. And uh, before we get into some other mm-hmm. stuff, I want to make sure we cover uh, something from the governor's State of the State address. Yes. Amy, and that was the governor asking for a certain amount of money to be put aside for senior services. What was that amount of money, and did you get it? That amount was $20 million, um, and that's still up for negotiation. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's clear that everyone wants to help our seniors, and it's just a matter of where is that money going to come from in, in perspective with everything else happening throughout the state. There's always you know, more need than there is money. So it's just a matter now of, of finding the money. Um, I did meet with several several delegates and senators during the session to kind of explain why that $20 million is so important. And it would be a one-time deal. It would not be an ongoing thing. So it wouldn't be something that we would necessarily include in our budget for programming. Um, but because so many of our seniors throughout the state they need help with HVAC units. So many of our senior centers need roofs. They need, um, you know, they they need capital improvements to their buildings. And we are very, very, very fortunate in Berkeley County that we don't have that issue necessarily. But we always need transportation vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have that issue for what reason? Uh, right? Our Berkeley County yeah. Commission yeah, is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, as a matter of fact, we had a, an electrical issue last week. And the facilities crew, I mean, they, they maintain everything. They, um, they take care of changing light bulbs. I mean, it, it's everything from we had a complete uh, renovation just before COVID. 
where the siding on our building was replaced, the roof was replaced on our building. We've gotten six brand new um, HVAC units that were brought in by a crane. I mean, our, our county is just so supportive and it's shocking and devastating that other counties are not supported like that throughout our state. Yeah, I'm going to throw a little bit of a wedge and I'll probably get some pushback on it. But historically, the the county has taken the lead more so than the city. Is that still the case? Um, the county definitely, just because we are in their building, um, you know, they, they definitely have been a firm supporter of us. But we are developing that relationship with the city uh, because we are in, within city limits. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think uh, for a long time, it was just no one really reached out to them from the center. No one ever invited them uh, over. I, that or, was not the case. Uh, they they well, did reach I, out, but they said he, uh, city kind will of. you let Amy be nice? <laughs> I'm sorry, you're nice. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that's what I was told. Yeah. Okay. Um that, that yeah. was what no. I was given. Um we have partnered with the city on a few things Good. and and we are yeah. kind of but you have to start somewhere. And we are kind of starting there and um we, we do have some city support financially now. Mm-hmm. Um we've always received the the C B D G funds yeah. to help with one of our uh, in home care programs. What's so, a C B D G fund? Um that is the community city block grant. Um, gotcha. So that that helps offset some of the expenses with our lighthouse program. And and, we, and we got care. sidetracked, but in yes. regards to the governor's money, is that being taken up during the interim session? At it all? is. It is. Um, we're, we're hoping that we'll be able to come to some kind of re- resolution. Um, I, I know that the twenty million is is way you know that that's very yeah. far fetched. Um, we're hoping we're working. Um, I'm part of a directors association from the state. And we're hoping if we could net half of that, um, that would that would be very beneficial and helpful that, for that ten, If it was half, ten million doesn't go to Berkeley Senior no, Service. This no. would be divided around this the state be, according to need. Yes, yes, according to need. And yes, according or, to need. Or as and, opposed to size. Um, both would be taken okay. into consideration. Uh, if we would receive any funds from that, we would purchase another transportation vehicle. Um, the the process to obtain our our transportation vehicles is very very lengthy it's a federal funded program so um, we applied and were approved and uh, for a vehicle in 2019 which still has yet to be built okay you mentioned for transportation vehicle Mm -hmm. uh when joe manchin was governor uh he provided a hot food vehicle is yes. that still being utilized it is still being utilized okay. I, I believe we are the only center left in the state that still uses ours everyone else's has died um so and um i believe it was maybe five six years ago uh, we received funding from a grant that we also had to match with the state but we were able to purchase a second one um, and we were able to receive some funds through uh, a, another grant that was offered through the Bureau of Senior Services, and we will we're in the process of getting a third. How did the how does the hot food vehicle complement or duplicate uh, Meals on Wheels? Well, it, and I get that question a lot. Uh, our our meals, first of all, there is no official charge for our our meals. If a senior is unable to pay, we're still going to deliver that meal. Um, there is so much of a need that it's it, it will never be a duplication of services. There's a lot of areas that may be hard for us to to reach. And Diane, I got to give Diane Waldron at Meals on Wheels a huge shout out. We work very very closely with her. Um, you know, if there's somewhere that maybe she doesn't have a volunteer that's able to reach, she'll reach out to us. So. Uh, the big thing is just making sure our seniors are fed. They have nutritious meals seven days a week, and that they're fed. Now, there, I'm sorry, John. There, uh, there was at one time a effort to uh, partner with uh, what was called Pantran at that time. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, that did Epta, not no. Epta. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that did not really materialize, did it? Um, we do partner with EPTA. Um, okay. As a matter of fact, we just sent a, a few drivers. Um, they had a. a very very well put together and great hands-on training um just as an added bonus it, it wasn't anything that was necessarily required for us but anytime you can get hands-on training versus an online training yeah. we take advantage of um we have partnered uh, with medicaid trips there have been times that didn't necessarily fit in their route rather than turn it back they've routed it to us we do the same with them so we do partner with them quite a bit 
I'm looking at your website here and, and mm -hmm. in the services that are offered in broad strokes, uh, life enrichment, transportation, nutrition, in-home care, outreach, caregiver support. Um, are these means tested? For it to be provided, it seems like from what we've talked about, it's it's for people who cannot afford to do things. Mm -hmm. Are these also available for folks who are just yes. lonely? Yes. Oh, absolutely, hundred um, percent. All of our we fall under the Older Americans Act, so we are overseeing. What, is, what the, is that? The Older Americans Act was put into place in the mid '60s, and basically, it's to provide anything for seniors um, within reason that to keep them independent and in their own homes. Um, we are monitored and audited by the West Virginia State Bureau of Senior Services, and that's where the majority of our funding comes from. They allocate all of our state and federal funding. So all of our programs are designed for seniors of over the age of 60 as a senior for us, um, but they're, they're designed to keep those seniors independent and active at whatever level they are, there are. And we, we recognize that it's not just seniors sitting at home all day, maybe being lonely, but we still have seniors working. We have a lot of seniors working. So we've started some, some evening activities to try to uh, reach out and bring those seniors in. And they've been very, very successful just over the last few months. So all of our programs are designed. Uh, we we want to keep our seniors independent, and that's the biggest thing. Now, most of your programs are you have beautiful, wonderful facility on High Street. We do. But you also have satellite centers, at least you used to. We did. Um, COVID kind of kiboshed a lot of those. Um, we had a, a site on the north end of town yeah. where we served lunches, and they kind of ran their own activities, and then we, we provided the lunch. Um, since COVID, that group has decided not to – not to to start again and we are kind of looking at doing that again because i think more a, a lot of seniors in the south end of the, the county bunker hill mm -hmm. in what jared's town a lot of times you know they, they may just not want to go to martinsburg even though we provide the transportation they just want to stay in that little knit community so we are looking at, at possibly opening some satellite um, sites again mm -hmm. Is there a referral process if um, a neighbor is concerned that their neighbor isn't being properly uh, fed, aren't, aren't fe feeding themselves well, they're not getting out enough, or they recently lost their spouse or, or something? Do you have an outreach program we where do. you go and knock on their door and say hi? Um, usually not knocking on their door. Most of the time we, we receive their contact information. If it's something that, that we feel that it is a health issue or could be an alarming issue. Um, we are mandated reporters, so we do report that. So and, does that go to um, social services? That, that would go to social okay. services, yes. Amy, are you doing any tax help programs this year? We have not. Um, we are not offering those this year. Um, we've, we've been referring everyone to the Martinsburg Library. Uh, to be very honest with our growing <laughs> activities, it, it was really hard to kind of designate a specific space within mm -hmm. the senior center for that. Um, we hope to maybe look at to doing that next year and, and creating a space to be able to do that. What activities do you have coming up that you'd like people to know about? I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> Who knew? So Who knew that would be the next question? Um, we're really excited. We're getting into the warmer weather, warm springtime. Uh, we want to do some things outside this year, utilize our beautiful beautiful pavilion, have some parties out there. Um, we are having a fundraiser that is uh, will be an indoor yard sale. The great thing about this, you just bring us your stuff and we will take care of the rest. Um, all proceeds from that yard sale will go to the Senior Center. Um, so that will be on April the 13th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if anyone needs to clean out their garage, their basement, bring us your stuff and we'll take it off your hands for you. What about the wonderful soup night that you had a few years ago? It kind of dropped by a potter's soup. And yes, like, yeah. the potter's bowl. That yeah. um, I, I get a lot of questions about yeah. whether or not to bring that back. Um, that was one of the fun nights of the year. It, so, yeah. it, it really was. Yeah. And a lot of that was because of the chairperson yeah. um, at the time who has passed away. I mean, she was yeah. a go-getter. Yeah. And and her name was Potter. And, and her last name was Potter. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've, we've kind of kicked around the idea of bringing that back. Yeah. Um, what made that so successful was the unique bowls yes. that were handcrafted by local artists. And unfortunately, we just don't we don't have we don't have the means to be able to do those anymore so 
Um, but that is something that I get asked a lot. Yeah, we depend upon the bowl night, the pot of bowl night, for our place servants at the uh, at dinner table at night. So. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Some of those bowls were absolutely stunning. They really are. Yes. Yeah. Amy, do you yes. uh, have a program that people can make the senior center part of their will? Yes, Requests? we do. We do, um, and that's part of our our outreach team. Um, we assist with, uh, we have a notary so we can, um, you know, your living will, your, your, um, last will. Um, so yes, we do. And that's actually how our pavilion was funded. We were, um, we were left in someone's will and it was a, an odd shaped piece of land and they thought that a pavilion would look nice there. So that's what that's. And now we have a, a pavilion with about 20 tables and, and what are you using the little pink building that, that's now a white building for? That is our in-home care office. That's okay. our annex building. Um, all of our office staff, our nurses, um, because there's so much traffic with our home health aides, and it, it, you really need privacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of mm-hmm. situations that we face and we encounter um, need to be treated very sensitively, and so that's why we have that second building. Mm-hmm. What other programs do you have coming up this spring and summer? We also, we will be having our um, senior prom, uh, which will be Friday, May the 10th. And um, I don't know if anyone saw the pictures or the posts that we made from last year. That was such a great time. Uh, We have formal wear that's donated, so you can get totally decked to the nine if you'd like. Or you can just come in your street clothes, your jeans, and and Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, We have a DJ that day, and... We, we have a, a little nail uh, station set up for the ladies. We have a little, um, last year we had the, um, oh shoot, the, the beauty school came and, and did some updos for our ladies to really just make them feel very, very special on that day. And uh, we had one of our sweethearts that actually met at the senior center, uh, the gentleman rented a limo and they arrived in a limo to the the senior prom so it is it's a lot of fun and um you know we just we have a blast we have a a really good time so that'll be on may the 10th um we'll also have our mother's day tea on may the 11th which is another fundraiser for us just a great time to relax with your mom your grandma your the, the mom figures in your life so um, tickets for that will be on sale next week what percentage of your funds are self driven through fundraisers um it, it it's it really varies um when covid hit we're still recovering from covid to be honest within the fundraising realm it's a very small percentage of our overall budget just because of the state and federal funding but those dollars are crucial to us because there's no strings attached to them so so much of the funding that we receive from grants or you know from the state very very tight tight regulations on how it can be used only a certain percentage can be used in certain areas so those fundraising dollars are are vital for us um, to be able to fill the holes where our other funding falls short do you have your own grant writers or does that come from the county grant writer um we've we've worked with a county grant writer before Uh, i primarily do the majority of our grant writing for the center um, just because we are a very very small staff and to put one more thing on one more person it, it would just be a lot uh, plus, I, I, I'm a people person. I like to to be out and 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 meet with people. So that's primarily my responsibility. Amy, good to see you again. Great to see you guys. Thanks uh, for having me. Stay right there. We have a final minute coming up. Okay. What's for lunch again today at the senior center? Amy? Um, it's time to flip the page. Me. It's time to flip the page. It is cheeseburger on whole wheat bun, potato wedges, baked beans, mixed fruit. Yum.